Change of Habit, the last Hollywood film starring Elvis Presley, hit theaters in the U.S. on November 10, 1969. The film was Presley's 31st theatrical movie. While it's true he did appear in several other films afterwards, those appearances were limited to concert documentaries. Throughout his prolific film career, which arguably rivaled his musical one, the king of rock and roll frequently appeared on screen alongside female leads who played his love interests. These ladies were often some of Hollywood's most attractive actresses. And the actress who bore the singular honor of accompanying Elvis in his last film was none other than the late great Mary Tyler Moore. Moore passed away in 2017 at age 80, but during her 60-plus years working in the entertainment industry, she was instrumental in presenting to the world a radically new vision of what it meant to be a woman in the modern world. Keep watching to learn all about how Mary Tyler Moore was Elvis's leading lady in his final film. Change of Habit marked a turning point in Elvis's career. Not only did Change of Habit see Elvis share the screen with Mary Tyler Moore, it also gave him a rare opportunity to tackle a dramatic role. Since it was his final film, unfortunately, we didn't see Elvis develop this side of his acting chops more thoroughly, but it did give us a glimpse into his range as an actor. The film's script was penned by James Lee, Eric Berkovici, and S.S. Schweitzer, and was based upon a story by Richard Morris and John Joseph. It followed the tale of three Catholic nuns preparing for their final vows when they're shipped off to a rough inner-city neighborhood, donning the garb of lay missionaries to work for a young doctor at his clinic. As these three nuns face the harsh realities of their new environment, their lives become increasingly complicated. In the process, the good doctor, played by Presley, falls in love with one of the nuns, who was played by Moore. At the time of the film's release, Moore was gearing up to appear on her own sitcom, The Mary Tyler Moore Show, which premiered the following year. After The Dick Van Dyke Show wrapped up in 1966, Moore appeared in a string of films including 1967's Thoroughly Modern Millie and 68's What's So Bad About Feeling Good. After co-starring in Change of Habit, Moore took a break from the big screen for 11 years to focus on TV. She didn't appear until 1980, starring in the Oscar-nominated coming-of-age drama Ordinary People. By 1969, Elvis was eager to set Hollywood films aside to concentrate on music. The previous year, he experienced a resurgence in popularity with his hit 68 comeback special, which resulted in him putting out a best-selling companion album. Reluctantly, however, he decided to turn back to Tinseltown one last time to appear in a movie before bidding his film career goodbye. At that point, despite his commercial success in the industry, Elvis found himself disappointed by his movie career. The only reason he did change of habit was because of a standing deal he'd made with NBC. He was contractually obligated to appear in at least one more film. The deal bound him to do two projects. One of those was the comeback special, while the other was the Mary Tyler Moore movie. Little did any of his fans know at the time that Change of Habit would be the last film he'd ever appear in. He knew he wanted to exit the film business, but his devoted fan base had no clue. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. After the nuns are sent off to the city to work at their assigned posts, they're surprised to learn that the handsome man they saw taking part in a jam session with some locals in an apartment above the clinic was actually the doctor they were slated to work with. The doc likewise initially mistakes the women for patients. After each nun learns what role they'll be playing at the clinic, given their area of expertise, that's when the story takes a grittier turn, as we see the difficulties the locals have to contend with on a daily basis. The living conditions are subpar at best, and crime, abuse, and discrimination are facts of life for these people. Michelle, Irene, and Barbara do their best to try to improve the lives of the neighborhood people while keeping the fact that they are nuns a secret. This causes them distress, and things are only made worse by the arrogant and out-of-touch Father Gibbons, played by Regis Toomey, who seems to have no idea how to serve his struggling parishioners. He finds the three nuns wearing street clothes and their supposed wild lifestyle to be offensive. Then there are the two Snoopy, Karen-type old ladies from the neighborhood, Rose and Lily, who make things worse by running to Gibbons every chance they get to gossip about the nuns and their neighbors. They slander the nuns by telling the father they're throwing wild parties and having men over at all hours of the night. In time, Gibbons demands that the nuns go back to the convent where he believes they belong. At the end of the flick, all three women have been thoroughly changed by their experiences. Barbara leaves the sisterhood as she feels too limited by her vows. Irene ends up coming to terms with her identity as a black woman, which she spent the better part of her life trying to hide. 
and Michelle faces the decision to either leave the order and pursue her romantic feelings for Dr. Carpenter or stick to her vows. The film concludes with Michelle and Irene entering a church where the doc is singing to pray for guidance in making that choice. Elvis didn't stretch himself. In their review of the film, Variety noted that Elvis was strongly cast as the understanding medico. While that's largely true, Presley didn't stretch himself in the movie. He stuck to his guns and presented himself in his customary strong and confident manner. While he could have attempted to push himself a little further in his delivery, given the fact that it was one of his only dramatic roles, he seemed to fall back on his tried and true, albeit somewhat overplayed, subdued approach. The Times pointed out that Elvis's performance was slightly unconvincing and shallow. In his defense, Elvis's somewhat lacking performance could be blamed on the writing. The character of John Carpenter was somewhat static, and his temperament didn't change much through the film. The real star was Mary Tyler Moore. Variety called her delivery sprightly and praised her for bringing a lot of life to Sister Michelle, who was tormented by the difficult decision she had to make. Another point of praise for the film was the way Presley and Moore's romance developed. Their affection built slowly and tastefully without needing to hint at sexuality along the way. This culminated in a scene in which, after learning Michelle was a nun, Doc Carpenter still speaks of marriage. So, while it might not be the most critically acclaimed film in Presley's repertoire, it wasn't a total bust. Moore and Presley did the best to work with the script they were handed. It wasn't quite the perfect swan song to end Elvis' acting career, but there are still many fans of the film that hold it dear to their hearts. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite Elvis Presley movie? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So, if you want exclusive content from Factsverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the Join button to get started for just $4.99.